In Acts 17, 11, we read, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good morning. This is devotional number 453, and today's date is May 9th, 2018. This week we've been looking at the subject of mercy. And in a previous devotional I mentioned that mercy is not receiving the punishment that one deserves. So today let's explore that idea further by considering these two points. Number one, what do we deserve? And number two, no mercy without judgment. Because God cursed the human race with death, we all deserve the wrath of God because of our sins. And these two verses in Romans clearly explain man's predicament. In Romans 3.23 we read, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 states, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The glory of God refers to eternal life or heaven and death has to do with the grave or hell is another synonym but it's still the grave. Uh, we read uh, concerning the wicked in Psalm 9:17, The wicked shall be turned into hell or the grave in all the nations that forget God. And the wicked are all of the non-elect. When the prophet Isaiah saw the holiness and majesty of Almighty God, he cried out in Isaiah 6, verse 5, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, Jehovah of hosts. God had confronted Isaiah with the true condition of his soul, and the prophet was terrified by the despicable nature of his own sins. God used that kind of godly fear as he drew his chosen people to himself for salvation when it was still available. The Lord Jesus Christ admonishes uh, all with these words in Luke 12, 4 to 5. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, and this would be God, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell or the grave. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Only those whose names were written in the Lamb's book of life, as we read in Revelation 21, 27, could escape from God's sentence of death and destruction which figuratively is called the lake of fire in Revelation 20, verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And we also want to keep in mind that when we read about fire and smoke in the Bible, they are uh, used to symbolize the wrath of God. We know that God is a God of law, and the Bible is his law book. In fact, God created the universe and established his physical, moral, and spiritual laws according to his infinite wisdom and sovereign will. He enforces his rules for his righteous purposes and for his glory according to his perfect standard of justice. Every sin 
a person might commit is a transgression of God's law. And we read about this in 1 John 3, 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Therefore, every sin is a crime against God that must be paid for. And if we do not have a substitute, which would be the Lord Jesus Christ, to pay for our sins, then we are our own sacrifice. We have to pay with our life. We also read in the fourth gospel, or Lazarus 5.22, this declaration, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. All the non-elect uh, are, as we said, guilty. And James 2.10 drives home this point very clearly. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Thus the sentence or judgment for breaking just one of God's laws is death and annihilation much less the millions upon millions of sins that each individual, depending on how old they were until they died. So in light of this, uh, how does mercy fit into the picture? If there were no laws, there would be no crimes, no punishments, and therefore no need for mercy. But the reality is that there are God's laws, and consequently there are crimes, sentences, or judgments, as well as God's mercy uh, during the day of salvation. We have to keep in mind that uh, God's laws are a reflection of Himself, of His righteousness, and God has bound Himself to execute judgment righteously, as we read, for example, in Psalm 96, verse 10. Say among the heathen that Jehovah reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. But God, by His grace, love, and mercy, uh, from the foundation of the world did pay for the sins of his chosen people through the atoning work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus was made sin and became a curse as he poured out his life. And we don't understand how God can die and be annihilated, but that's exactly what took place for those he came to save. And that act is undisputably the greatest act of mercy in the history of the world. In Luke 22, 42 and 44, we get some idea of the magnitude of Christ's uh, sacrifice prior to creation as he demonstrated that in the events leading up to the crucifixion, the crucifixion itself, as well as the resurrection. This was a demonstration of what had taken place uh, outside of time and prior to the creation of this universe. We read, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. The uh, suffering that Christ had to go through for the second time, even though he was not bearing sins, and that's very important that we recognize that, but nonetheless, there was very real physical suffering uh, 
torture and being crucified the next day. And we also recognize the horror of being forsaken by God as he cried out in Matthew 27, 46. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me?